Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Take it away, Scotty. We're live. We're live. It's Friday night. It's been a while. I don't know if I remember how to do this. <laughs> It'll come back quickly. It'll come back? All right. Hey, guys. I'm Boulder. It's Friday Night Flies. We're here at Spud Valley, 1380 Birch Street, downtown Pemberton. If we don't got it, you don't need it. Sponsored by Hammerton Fish Finder, I guess it goes this way. Yeah. We talk trout. Yeah, I remembered. Yeah. It's coming back. It's Zach's down in Bass Pro, sending us videos. We're up here in Pemby, living the life, fishing every day. And uh, right now it is steelhead season down on the Squamish River. You can check out uh, the fishing report on Friday, or not Friday Night Flies, but on Pemberton Fish Finder slash reports. But I just put up a, a little little report in there, some inside information for you guys. If you're struggling, give us a call and we'll take you out, get you fishing. So, with Steelhead in mind, I guess it's on this side now. Yeah, it's great, great honor. Um, that is, if you've watched Friday Night Flies, you know we are Moto Minnow fanatics as well as uv fanatics but this guy here is the steelhead moto minnow variant it is our answer to Everything. the pink worm we that sit out there as fly <laughs> fishermen and see them dang oh, center man. pinners just laying into all those fish that you fly fished over and swung flies and same with the uh the guys doing the two hand fishing the spay this is our answer to the pink worm it's been, uh, yeah, the, I mean, the rivers are super duper full of salmon fry and mm -hmm. you'd be a fool not to try and imitate yeah. it. And well, we, we have caught steelhead on the moto. We catch everything on that thing. Um, Brad's uh, got a photo up. Do you have it on your... Uh... It's not on, it's on uh, our page, the, the Squamish fishing page. There you go. Website. So he's got a, a brand new wanna... chromer up. We went out the other day and hammered the river a little bit. It was a lot of fun. I don't want to share too much info because we don't want to crash the river. That's true. That's but, true. Uh, I mean, it's, it's one of those places that you kind of like got to know where to go firsthand. Yeah. Um, access is a bit There's of a lot of water, tricky access. And if you guys are wanting to get the upper hand and get on the fast track, you know who to call. Who, who doesn't want that, right? That's so, right. So the moto is an effective pattern for steelhead as the original. And uh, we just, we were thinking and we we're like, oh, do we not have the stuff to make a pink one? And yeah, well, hell we do. So we made, made a little bit of a modification on it and that's the end result. So yeah, like I said, that's our answer to the pink worm right there. So sometimes you need to throw a little, little variation out there. So we'll take her down and we'll get this pattern going. Most of you have already seen us tie a million motos, but if you're new to the site, we are uh, growing pretty rapidly over the years here. So if you haven't seen a moto, here we go. We start off with a nice big size two, size two streamer hook. Now, this guy, I've weighted. One of the reasons why I've done this with the weight <laughs> is that it gives it that pink worm jig action as you are drifting it down the river. So you can drift this thing. Um, I was drifting it under using a uh, sinking tip line. Works good, you can drift it through the pool, let it bounce off the bottom, give it some rod twitches as it's going through. Nice healthy hunk of lead at the front. So that's really gonna get that, uh, that fly dipping and dodging. It sits there and does that as you're doing the rod wiggles. Looks really good in the water. Uh, we got my uh, Ultra Thread UV here. You got to tell people where you were, man, because everybody's like, yeah, he's good. Look, we got a little bit of a sun. Oh, where I was. Yeah. Where I disappeared to. Yeah, so, Barbados, right? unlike what everybody thought, and Brad locked me away in the sea can until it was organized and the uh, ice fishing stuff was put away and the river stuff was put out, I was in Barbados. That's where I went, to sunny Barbados, chilling on the beach, tried my hand at fly fishing out there. Stuck on a beach with your wife, you poor guy. Oh, it was... <laughs> you guys hey, holding hands my and wife and... is my best friend. <laughs> it was fantastic. No, I was meaning that, like, sarcastic as hell. It's, yeah, I know. I mean, if, if I got stranded on a beach with my wife, I'd be pretty happy about that. If you know what I'm saying. Definitely. Are we all out of... Uh... Toothbrushes? 
No, there's toothbrush. Yeah. I just had it out. It's right there. No, that's um, that's not toothbrush. Oh, tooth oh you want like the tooth 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 toothbrush? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go dig out my. Uh... That's all right. We'll just skip that. So one little okay. tip I was gonna show you guys with marabou. I know there are some people that love to wash the marabou out. Well, this is uh, um, because when you're dealing it's been with a while these, since I cleaned my toothbrush, but oh, that's, that's that's Brad's home home brush right there. Yeah. But you can see you get a lot of this sort of fibers from the dyeing process. Easy solution is a toothbrush, and I just oh this one I shouldn't use this one. Oh, is it too? It's still got a little but too much sticky either, on there. It's a much? little yeah, it's making the marabou black and shit. Ooh. But if you uh, run a toothbrush through the marabou, it'll get rid of all of that stuff and make it nice and fluffy and plump. This is this is my newer one. That's your new one. Yeah. <laughs> so as usual, I'm gonna take one plume of this hot fluorescent pink marabou, and I'm gonna get those tips lined up as I pull it off of the stalk or the stem. And we'll try that little toothbrush trick again here. Oh yeah, that one's much better. Makes a big difference, doesn't it? Just getting some of the excess dye out of them. Gets all that clumping out, gets them all nice and plump. Yeah, look at the difference. So Just that whole on. feather now is all been broken apart, ready to go on as a tail. So all I do is stroke those fibers. I take one side and then I go to the other. Get the tips matched up, rip it off of it. All right, so length of my tail is the length of the hook shank. I've got it tied on to the hook point. Don't really need to go past the hook point. A couple of nice tight turns, one in behind, locks it in. Grab this excess material in the front, hold it tight, put that scissor right behind the bead or the cone and cut it off. And then with my fingers I just kind of wrap those excess materials around the shank. So this helps to build a little girth. Nice tight, ooh, real tight. You got that tight, that yeah. tight. I really got to throw this bobbin away. It used to be a uh, a ruby tipped one, but the ruby tip broke. We got some really nice uh, ceramic, ceramic uh, ones in, eh? Yeah, super fly. We got some nice ones in. So, we so get we've that got in some there. really big announcements for next week too, Scott. Oh, that's right. There's a whole bunch of stuff happening mm. oh, with we got Friday a whole Night bunch Flies. A yeah. whole bunch of new sponsors coming in. Yeah. Big things happening here, Friday Night Flies. And uh, I'm sure our man Zach is going to be the one to tell you about this next week. We're excited. Should we leave it for Zach then? Yeah, we'll leave it, we'll leave it for Zach. We'll see. He's we'll been see doing what a lot of work in the background. All right, so we got that uh, marble tail on. I like to add a little flash, so I got some purple... Pearl flash here. I take one strand, fold it over, nip it in half, so I end up with two strands on each side. I'm gonna tie it in on one side, loop it underneath, trap them, get them positioned where you like, and that's that. Alright, next let's start getting this body ready. I like to grab some of this fluorescent pink saddle. Very sexy stuff from Superfly. I want a little bit of a long one. It has a nice tapered profile from shorter fibers to longer. I'm just going to get rid of the fuzz at the back. Now we are going to tie this in. Curvature going down, but by the tip. So I'll just grab that tip. Just stroke those fibers back gently so you don't peel them off of the the middle stalk or membrane or whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to tie that in Let's right on the top. Oh yeah, that's the little fan pack. Yeah. 
Um, so a little something to look forward to at the end. We got a little fan pack, some little goodies in there. We'll share that to you when we're done fly. So we got our ribbing to put in here. So this is just silver round braid. Picked it up from a craft store. You could use silver wire. That would be equivalent to a, uh, a small, not an ultra fine, but just a small. I'm going to bring my thread up. Now because the body of this I leave as the thread, and that's why I've used this thread, I go all the way up to the head quite a bit just because I want to get all that, most of that marabou covered. If you have a lot of this stragglers poking out, it doesn't really matter. It's not going to make a difference because we're going to wrap that saddle up the body. But we're just trying to cover it nicely, if you can, touching wraps with this fluorescent <coughs> ultra thread which happens to have some nice UV shine to it it does so we're gonna do this ribbing now I do a pretty I do a tighter rib with the silver than I do with the saddle so probably twice as much with the silver rib than what I'm gonna do with the saddle hackle it's a little extra shine on the underside of this fly. And then we're going to take our saddle. We're going to hold it up. I'm just going to palmer these feathers a little bit. Just with your fingers, stroke them back and up. It's just going to help it when it lies on the fly. It takes a little bit of manipulation. Manipulating. Just coax it back. Doesn't have to be perfect. Kind of helps it out there. And then we're going to wrap this saddle up. And so I usually, so I'm going not as tight as that silver wrapping there. Oh, got some that have gotten trapped. Get them backing up. There we go. Now if you do those wraps too tight, you don't get a you get more of a woolly bugger shape to it than a moto minnow. And I'm gonna wrap all that in around the collar. Trap that little tag end. Nice secure wraps. Nip it off, and there we are. So before I start tying any more in, I'd just like to kind of just negotiate these things back. It helps. You want them to have movement, but you also want them to be lined back. A couple nice turns in there. Now to finish this sexy fly off, I'm going to go to our hot pink mallard. And you want to get fiber that has some good good uh, black variation on it. That gives that illusion of movement. And we're just going to peel off the fluff off the back. And you also want a, a fairly long feather. Oh, something was shaking the camera there. Hmm. Maybe the train's going by. Oh, well, maybe it was the vice. And we're going to tie that in right behind the cone. Nice and tight. Get rid of the tag. I didn't bring my hackle pliers. There should be a pair in here. So you always tie my my uh, mother flanking by the tip. That yeah, works both ways. Yeah. When you do it this way, it kind of uh, leans backwards a little easier. So stroke it back. Palmer that stuff. When you're doing your wraps, just making sure that yeah, it's all going good. back. Grab your tip. A couple in behind. A couple good ones in front. Most of the time you can leave that tip section on because it blends right in. And then before you finish it up, you just 
brush it down a little bit. There you go. So a couple nice tight turns with a whip finish. You snuff a little collar or something in there? Keep that head. Oh, you can. This one's on there nice and tight. Yeah. yeah, if you do have a little bit of room and you haven't uh, gotten that that measurement nice and tight in there, then you can uh, you can put a little Hot spot. little dubbing in behind there. I was doing it with uh, a little bit of red, like our improved. Or chartreuse. Or... That's yeah. one thing I noticed that pink and chartreuse really go well together when it comes to steelhead. Whoa. Steelhead and bullies. Yeah. Yeah. Both both work out really well. So yeah, so you can put a little hot spot in there if you like. You can leave it blank. You can do a bunch of variations. Well, here, you know what? Let's do it. Can you, is it too late to put a little hot spot in there? It's never too late. Okay, well, this, we'll get a quick thumbnail there. Okay. Give us a good one. Okay, now let's put a little hot spot in there. And uh, we'll just see what the difference is. So that's and, your and original. Then this, is, this is where people can give us the feedback too if they like a, a hot spot or no hot spot. So... Uh, this one here, you can see one. You can change the color with changing up your cone head. I ran out of green cones at the moment, so I had to use a, a bead head. But uh, let's go with that chartreuse. What do you got here? That's the soup. That feels like super fly diamond dub. Diamond dub in here in the chartreuse. There you know okay, what? They're gonna, we're gonna have to get a little feedback from y'all. Uh, I know you had, there it is, let's see if this will work, alright, so I'm just splitting my thread there with the, oh, he's going to get real techy here, <laughs> make uh, it look pretty, you want to get that dubbing in, spin your bobbin, and then get, Give your thread a little twist. It's a quick way of doing a little dub and loop. A little, little sweet spot there. So if you wanted to fancy it up, that's your answer. Yeah, and the thing with the collar I found too is that you kind of got to drum it in. <laughs> oh, what happened to my whip finish? There we go. Zach giving us a tough time. He's like, chartreuse doesn't work. Ha <laughs> ha like, Shut up, Zach. I don't know what you're talking about, Zach, because that looks pretty good. So yeah. if you have all of a sudden you got you go to the river and you have real muddy water because we had a super sunny day where it rained, chartreuse is going to help you cut that water. It's going to make that fly stand out. Uh, you can bug it out a little with the Velcro. Whoa. Make it flow, baby. Make it flow. <laughs> That's right. That hot spot is sexy. So there you go. There's your your steelhead moto variant. Oh, oh man, I like that. Okay, give me a thumbnail. Quick thumbnail. Bingo. Got. It. Okay, we're going back up top. And you know what? We got a. We got something to say, man. Who sent that to us? Who sent us? I'm trying to remember. I'm losing, I'm losing cargo here. Because I know I was talking to him before I went to Barbados. Rich, wasn't it? I think it's Rich. Let's find out what's in here and then I'll tell you. Oh yeah, this was Rich. Alright, so we were talking right. to Rich about some of his shrimp patterns. There, we'll, we'll give you the little... Yeah, look at those things. Down just a little bit. They're, uh, the camera zoomed in a little too much. I'm going to have to... Yeah, there you go. Just kind of right. turn it on the side there. Perfect. Shows him. So... Rich was uh, shared. Put it right up to the top yeah, he camera. shared some of our there. or shared some of his closer, patterns. Closer up a bit to the right, there, right there. Perfect. Shared some of his patterns on our uh, Facebook page. So thanks for your participation. And uh, yeah, these things, killer. I'm loving the. Uh, you know what? I can't wait to try those on the pink this year. Tell yeah, they'll you. work, man. You bet they are. Oh yeah. I'm gonna eat that thing like it's popsicles. I don't know where you're gonna <laughs> find them, but. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, what else did he send us? Um, so yeah, he sent us those. Those are those are sexy. Love seeing that. We're gonna get those on the water. You I guess how, you know how hard those are to come by. Yeah, we don't even find these around our parts. You gotta yeah. Lovely. We're gonna have to do some special salmon flies. It's gonna be really hard to put those on a fly. They look so <laughs> badass in that. Uh, I know. And then that Harkley and Haywood. 
And then, so this, I guess he, he was a sponsor in the Olympics with his, Oakley. Yeah, he does. He, he does. Gonna, he does. Uh, what's his company? Eyesight. Yeah. I don't know if we can see it on there. Yeah. Bam. Just hold it still. Oh, pull it up there and just hold her still. So there you go. If you guys are needing optometry, he's the man to see. Yeah. Over in Kelowna. So we got some nice Olympic pins. Hey, that was. But some the crappy. treasure. I think you got some of them in there too. The treasure was some old hooks that he sent us. Yeah, man. We love these old school stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because you get to hold combine. That, hold that label up. Yeah, there's some of these nice streamer hooks in here. Oh, you want to hold this up to the camera? Edgar and Seeley. Yeah, just, there you go. Hold her up. Yeah, a little bit more to the right. Nope. The other right. Oh my God, you're using there those you go. Hold old hooks nice again, eh? Yeah, man. Check out the pull it back. There it is. It just finally came into focus. Man. Those are as hard as it is to come by. It just fell into our lap. We yeah. love them. Thanks, That's Rich. That's nice. And then uh, I think there was some like dry some fly nice hooks? dry fly hooks. Oh yeah. That's probably a wicked fly a hook for what I was just tying. Maybe a size big, but Harkley and Haywood, Haywood Sporting no Goods longer, Limited. No longer. Uh, what it oh closed about forty years ago. So, Rich, you're dating yourself, my man. Uh, and, Vancouver. Uh, the son of uh, Mr. Haywood or Harkley actually lives in Pemberton here. Uh, what was his name? Um, Dave Harkley. Actually, let's all yeah. Bring it These are vintage, are they? They, they, they so, saw it. You nope, just go, missed it. Go one, nope, the other way. They're right there. Hold her steady. They saw it. They saw there it. There you go. Harkley and Haywood, man. Any old timers so, out there know what that store was about? Yeah. So a little and yeah, brings it right back into Pemberton. It does, and you Full know what? Circle. I'm gonna show David Hartley that he's gonna probably cry, because he probably he might have. So that was his dad's or his grandfather's store. His dad's store. His dad's and store. And he probably did the bagging of those hooks when he was a young lad. Probably slave so labor. There's a, good, there's a good chance that <laughs> it uh, might uh, make him cry. It, it might. might. You never know. You never know. So Bring the camera along. If you cry easy, that is. That is. <laughs> so. So Rich, Thanks, Rich, thank you very much. He's out there, Mr. Woodhouse. Thank Woo. you so much. We're really looking forward to trying a lot of these things and uh, look forward to us doing it some justice, those hooks. Definitely. So that wraps up our first show for tonight. Uh, we're definitely going to be back with a few more. I know Zach sent a video up from Bass Pro down in Tawasson. Uh, if you're ever in the area, he's there five days a week, and if not seven. So jump in and say hello to him. And I'm going to be back with another salmon fry pattern. Scotty Holmes just walked in the door. You tie him? I'll go to my truck and I'll show you exactly what like, <laughs> Perfect. He's got, he's got, <laughs> the, Scotties, the Scotties are in tune. So oh we're, we're, I'm gonna go get we're in right tune. So Scotty Holmes is going to come Did back. He do, is he doing the motos? Well? I guess so. That's awesome. Yeah, he was okay. looking at my fly and his cool. face dropped. Yeah. So anyways, we're out. We're going to be back. And uh, we'll be back with more bullshit.